Hi guys, it is a beautiful spring evening here in the uh, collapse of global industrial civilization now that this great tornado warning and hailstorm and brimstone and hellfire is passed over without a drop of rain here. What is it? It is Thursday. June 16, 2022, and guys, that has been crazy around Bugs in a Jar Farm the past few days, and I have been too busy to pay much attention to the collapse of global industrial civilization, so this is just going to be a quick one, because I don't want my tater tots to burn in the air fryer. If you guys have not found the air fryer, uh, I highly suggest... Even colony of cells can eat uh, fried food now. No oil involved with the air fryer, a great development in global industrial civilization. But anyway, guys, just I've uh, been wanting to, uh, been wanting to get to uh, a presidential memorandum for a few days here that uh, Mr. Smetana sent me back. Just a couple of these from the Flotsam and Jetsam department, literally, I guess. I don't know if this is Flotsam or Jetsam. We're gonna go to Mars. We're going, we've already lost this planet, so let's go to the red planet and uh, see what is, uh, happening on the red planet today human trash discovered on mars yes human trash discovered on mars you better believe the conspiracy wackos are in a complete uproar over this one a piece of human trash has been found on mars and as embarrassing as that sounds, at least it's not a cigarette butt. Yes. NASA's Perseverance Mars rover announced the, quote, surprise find yesterday, June 15th, and shared photos of what appears to be a square of aluminum foil snagged between rocks. Hmm. This is, uh, so of course, NASA is scrambling for the explanation. This is uh, from NASA, quote, My team has spotted something unexpected. It's a piece of a thermal blanket that they think may have come from my descent stage the rocket-powered jetpack that set me down on landing day last year. Yes. It's a surprise finding because my descent stage crashed about two miles away, two kilometers away. Did this piece land here after that, or was it blown here by the wind. Yes, if NASA was hoping for theories, they definitely asked the wrong crowd. Commenters on social media are mostly horrified that humans are polluting a planet that we have never visited in the flesh. Yes, some chastise the agency for being sloppy while a few pranksters claim they spotted NASA trash and other Mars photos, including a big gulp cup. There you go. So we are already trashing Mars, but uh, here on our own planet, this one, uh, I can't wait till Saturday for the Hopium Roundup. Isolated Greenland polar bear population adapts to climate change. Yes, an isolated population of polar bears in Greenland has made a clever adaptation 
to the decline in the sea ice, meaning the frozen ocean ice, they depend upon as a platform for hunting seals, offering a ray of ha, uh, a ray of ha, uh, a ray of ha, uh, ha, uh, hope, a ray of ha, uh, hope for the species in at least some locales in the warming Arctic. So take a wild guess, the definition of a ray of hope. This is how uh, polar bears are adapting to melting sea ice. Yes, uh, the population inhabiting part of Greenland's southeast coast has survived with only abbreviated access to ice formed from frozen seawater by hunting instead from chunks of freshwater ice breaking off from the huge Greenland ice sheet. There you go. You, you know, if you can't, if you're a polar bear and you can't find any frozen seawater, uh, there's plenty of frozen chunks of freshwater ice calving off of these melting glaciers. So there you go. Uh, just change from frozen seawater to, to glaciers crashing into the ocean. Hell, it holds you up. You know, that's called adapting to climate change. But anyway, guys, uh, what I was really here to talk about, so uh, won't be any surprise in here. I'm just going to read a presidential memo uh, titled, The Release of Fossil CO2 and the Possibility of Catastrophic Climate Change. This was written by a fellow, uh, well, what is this dude's name? Frank Press. Frank Press, uh, Science Advisor and Director of the Office of Science and Technology Policy. All right, this is a memo to the President from Frank Press. <clears throat> Fossil fuel combustion has increased at an exponential rate over the last 100 years. As a result, the atmospheric concentration of CO2 is now 12% above the pre-industrial revolution level and may grow to one and a half to two times that level within the next 60 years. The cause of the greenhouse effect of atmospheric CO2, the increased concentrations will induce a global climatic warming of anywhere from one half to five degree C. Hmm, where have we heard this before? The potential effects on the environment of a climatic fluctuation of such rapidity could be catastrophic and calls for an impact assessment of unprecedented importance and difficulty. A rapid climatic change may result in large-scale crop failures at a time when an increased world population taxes agriculture to the limits of productivity. The urgency of this problem derives from our inability to shift rapidly to non-fossil fuel sources once the climatic effects become evident not long after the year 2000. The situation could grow out of control 
the four alternate energy sources and other remedial actions become effective. Natural dissipation of CO2 would not occur for a millennium after fossil fuel combustion was markedly reduced. As you know, this is not a new issue. This is not a new issue. Is my camera on? I don't know if I'm talking to myself. What is, what is new is the growing weight of scientific support which raises the CO2 climate impact from speculation to a serious hypothesis worthy of a response that is neither complacent nor panicky. Yes, the authoritative National Academy of Sciences has just alerted us that it will issue a public statement along these lines in a few weeks. My view is that the policy implications of this issue are still, oh, I'm sorry, wait a minute. So that was the uh, end of the presidential memorandum titled Release of Fossil CO2 and the Possibility of Catastrophic Climate Change. So what president are we talking about? What president received that memorandum? Uh, if your answer was Jimmy Carter, you know, the one with the solar panels up on the roof, give yourself a gold star. That was written in 1977. 1977, 87, 97, 07, 17, 45 years ago. 45 years ago, this dude, Frank Press, called it out. So take a wild guess how the Carter administration reacted to this uh, memorandum. This is, so what happened when, when Press's memo made it to the president's desk? James Schlesinger, America's first Secretary of Energy, attached his own note in response before sending it along to President Carter. Quote, my view is that the policy implications of this issue are still uncertain to warrant presidential involvement and policy initiatives. Mm. Carter seems to have heeded this warning, meaning from Schlesinger, and did not make much progress on climate crisis mitigation during his presidency. Uh, a significant, now who does this remind you of, a significant challenge facing Jimmy Carter was his own contradictory energy aims. Despite his goal of encouraging alternative energy, you know, by uh, putting these solar panels on the roof, he also felt there was a national security interest in boosting U.S. oil production in the wake of the 1973 oil crisis. Uh, one of these uh, environmental historians, uh, whoever this is, uh, quote, we realized our dependence on foreign oil was dangerous and very importantly, alternative energy was in his infancy, so Carter was both doing conservation and still encouraging more domestic oil and gas as a way of reducing dependence on foreign oil. As with all policy, you have conflicting goals. And uh, we don't have to go to the 
many mainstream media articles today about how Save the Planet Democratic President Joe Biden is uh, saving the planet while calling for more, let's see, he, he wants more domestic uh, oil and gas production, more gasoline refining, and he wants Saudi Arabia to ramp up their oil drilling. This is how we are going to reach net zero in the U.S. Uh, this one article, which I might come back to, talking about there is one cure for high gasoline prices, and that is going to be a recession partly brought on by the high gasoline prices. So, uh, and I'm going to join, I think I'm going to join with my limited knowledge in this. I will say the United States will be in recession. Certainly by the end of this year, we are heading to a recession, and we will see if that takes care of the high oil prices. But right now, I hear my air fryer has gone off, so I'm going to go enjoy some Save the Planet non-fried tater tots. No vegetable oil needed. So, colony of cells, get yourself an air fryer and get out there and enjoy your air fried tater tots while you still can. Bye guys. This little dog looks like you have passed out for the night. Yes. You gonna sleep there all night? Just sleep on the table or what?